and friends, recently all portable equipment has been transferred to lithium batteries and the near future is behind them. Lithium batteries are very different, but the most popular among do-it-yourselves are ordinary 18600 lithium-ion banks. They are cheap and easy to get, especially often they are used in electric cars. Here I would like to recommend my video about lithium-ion batteries about their features, methods of charge, discharge, and protection. Answers of many questions that you're going to ask here in the comments, you can find in the specified video. The link is in the description. In general, in order to assemble a normal lithium-ion battery from used 18650 standard cans, you first need to measure the parameters of these cans for subsequent proper sorting. The main parameters are internal resistance, capacitance, voltage and self-discharge. We will skip the last two, the voltage is almost the same for everyone and the self-discharge in the case of normal cans is small. In any case, the first two parameters can answer the question how good is the battery. If the internal resistance can be measured with specialized instruments in just a second, then with the capacitance everything isn't so simple. The exact capacity of a battery can only be measured by discharging it. The technical documentation from manufacturers indicates the discharge currents and voltages at which the battery will give the declared capacity. It would seem nothing complicated, took and discharged, but not everything is so simple. If the measurement of internal resistance is a matter of seconds, a discharge with a rated current, let's say 1 ampere, will take several hours if the bank is good. In the case of one or two cans, this is tolerable, but what if you need to identify the capacity of several, tens or even hundreds of such cans? It will take forever. Here the Chinese come to the rescue with their mini electronic loads for $20 to $30. These are pretty good options that can work as both a capacitance meter and an electronic load. This is in principle little money, but one such thing can only discharge one can. But what if you need to discharge them in a large quantities to reduce time? If you buy a few electronic loads, then it's already expensive. At one time, on the basis of simple TP4056 boards, I made such a charger for 20 cans of 18650 at once. TP4056 are cheap, cost less than a dollar, so such a charge costs a small amount. So the idea was constantly spinning in my head to make a similar thing, but for discharge, such cans. In general, having looked through AliExpress, I realized that there are a lot of ready-made solutions, but the minimum cost of such loads is 10 to 15 dollars. There are cheaper options, but they aren't a current stabilizer and don't support the discharge current value you set. In such things, as the can is discharged, the current will drop and it looks like that the battery gives more capacity. This will be an incorrect measurement. Most consumers that you subsequently connect to your battery either consume a stable current or, as the battery discharges, they will, on the contrary, consume more current from it. In general, if you make a discharge device, then it is necessary to make with stabilization. The cheapest options for non-stabilized dischargers that you can buy on Ellie look like this and you shouldn't confuse this with expensive options for $15 to $30. The latter are a current stabilizers and support the set discharge current to the very end. But in return, the ZB2L3 modules are cheap, only $2 to $3. Today I will propose a method on how to make a normal device for discharging batteries with current stabilization from such a simple timer counter. Moreover, our device can also be used to discharge other batteries up to 15 volts. These modules can measure capacitance. You can set the discharge and voltage and calibration is also available. The parameters of our discharge device are limited by the ZB2L3 module and they are as follows. The maximum current is 3 amps, but the module itself can't regulate the current. It is set by the load resistor and isn't stabilized. The maximum voltage of the discharged battery is 15 volts, module operating current less than 70 milliamps. Maximum measurable capacity is 9999 amps hour. 
Discharge voltage range adjustable from 1 to 15 volts in 10 millivolt steps. The supply voltage of the module itself is 5 volts via the micro USB connector, although more voltage is possible. Current measurement error 1.5%, voltage 1%. The module is stuffed with a bucket of uh, protections with error codes and it is actually quite difficult to burn it. The display has a 7-segment indicator which sequentially displays the current values of current capacitance and residual voltage on the bank. The user can set the end of discharge voltage upon reaching which the module will turn off and show the capacity of the battery. I always discharge such banks with a current of 1 ampere to a voltage of 3 volts. Here I mean non-high current banks. High current ones can be discharged with higher currents and in some cases up to 2.7 to 2.5 volts. That is, this module is a capacity counter and a timer that will turn off the battery when it is completely discharged. At the output of the module, there is a chip with power transistors that operates in switch mode. It's on or off. When opened, it discharges the battery into powerful resistors, which usually come with such boards. The resistor has a constant resistance and it is clear that when the voltage on the bank decreases, the discharge current will decrease. At the same time, the power transistor chip of the module itself is practically cold due to the switch mode of operation. Let's try to cross a simple current stabilized electronic load with this board, thereby obtaining a very cheap analog of relatively expensive Chinese boards like this one. The circuit of a simple current load is now in front of you. It has its own separate reference source in the face of the TL431 microcircuit. The reference voltage of 2.5 volts is applied to one of the inputs of the operational amplifier. To the other input of the same channel of the op amp is applied a voltage which will drop on the shunt or a current sensor. The op amp will compare these two voltages and if there is a difference it will slide the open or vice versa close the power transistor linearly thereby maintaining a stable discharge current regardless of the voltage on the bank. You can connect a 12 or 3.7 volt battery. The discharge current will be the same. It is set by you by rotating this resistor. Homemade load PCBs don't look good. I have run out of cartridges and I haven't had time to change them yet. Therefore, such leaky boards come out. But if you need boards of high quality, multi-layer, multi-colored and shape and size, then GLC PCB will cope with this task. In addition, the company provides services for industrial 3D printing, soldering stencils and complete circuit assembly. The prices are humane and the quality has been tested for years and not only by me. You will find a link to the GLCPCB website in the description. The circuit shows that a dual operational amplifier LM358 is used. Its second channel isn't used. In theory, you can stick another shunt with a power transistor and get a discharger for two cans. Of course, you will also need two ZB2L3 modules. Our load circuit consumes negligible current, no more than 10 mA, and is connected to the power input of the ZB2L3 module, that is to say, to USB. But a circuit from 5 volts may not work quite correctly, so it is advisable to raise the supply voltage to 7 to 9 volts. That is, instead of 5 volts, apply 9 volts to the USB input. In theory, the reference voltage can also be taken from the ZB2L3 board, thereby eliminating the TL431 chip with strapping, but I prefer to use a separate chip. Before use, the ZB2L3 board needs to be calibrated. The circuit for connecting the electronic load to the Chinese module is now in front of you. The maximum discharge current of the load is about 1.6 to 1.7 amps and is set by the trimmer. Adjustment is done on the finished device. We connect the battery, set the discharge and voltage and start the process. By rotating the trimmer we achieve a discharge current value of 1 ampere and that's all. At the end the trimming resistor screw must be sealed with glue. 
It's important to remember here that the load operates in a linear mode and given that we have a field effect transistor in the TO220 package, it isn't recommended to load with a power of more than 20 to 25 watts, that is, this is the maximum for our device. And if you're going to get such power, the transistor needs forced cooling by a fan. But if you make a discharger only for 18650 cans with an average discharge current of 1 ampere, then given the maximum voltage on such a charged bank of 4.2 volts, the maximum power at the load will be no more than 4.2 watts. This isn't much given that a part will dissipate on the current sensor, but nevertheless, the transistor needs a heat sink, the more the better. In the meantime, our battery was discharged to the indicated 3 volts and the discharge stopped. On the display, we see what capacity the bank gave. Everything works. In total, the ZB2L3 board costs about $2. A homemade electronic load is generally a penny. All bam, transistor and small things. Altogether, one discharger will cost no more than $5, even if you buy everything. Finding a ready-made version from China with similar functionality is extremely difficult and would even say impossible. Nothing prevents us to make 10 such discharges for the simultaneous discharge of 10 cans. We save the most valuable thing we have – time. That's all today. Let me remind you that, as always, you will find all the useful links in the description of the video. It remains only to say goodbye until we meet again. With you, as always, was Kasyan TV.